Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. I'm Jeff in the house. Unbelievable Marty. We're talking about the big one. It's Melrose, Massachusetts at Memorial Hall. Saturday night, November the 13th. It's going to be out of control. We got to get Virgil on there. No, we, we don't. We'll be back with a brand new Wrestling Insiders party with Marty. And, oh, what am I supposed to say? MJ Niles. No, 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 no. You, you lost your line. We're back with a brand new Wrestling Insiders party with Marty next. Wrestling fans, years have become months that have become weeks, and now we're talking days and even hours as Boston Wrestling MWF celebrates its 20th anniversary, going back to the 90s. Saturday night, November the 13th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. The superstars and legends of yesterday, today, and tomorrow will take part in a live wrestling event, autograph photo, fan fest, VIP exclusive Q&A, plus the kickoff to our annual Paul Bear Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive. After Jimmy Kimmel embarrassed Melrose for, well, being Melrose, we're also going to have a superstar costume contest where Best Dressed wins an awesome autographed prize. On November the 13th, you'll see and meet two-time WWE World Champion and Hall of Famer Bob Backlund, WWE Hall of Famer Bushwhacker Luke, WWE Hall of Famer Alondra Blaze, a.k.a. Medusa, from WCW, WWE Intercontinental and Tag Team Champion Marty Jannetty, the Doctor of Style Slick, Doink the Clown, Duke the Dumpster Drossy, Portuguese Man of War Aldo Montoya, plus two-time Impact Wrestling World Champion Die Hard Eddie Edwards, JTG of Crime Time, John Cena Sr., Oscar of Men on a Mission, AEW's Jorah Joe, and more. VIP packages and tickets are on sale now at bostonwrestling.com. We'll see you live November the 13th. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans, welcome to another installment of Wrestling Inside His Party with Marty. I can't believe the day is finally here, Marty. It, we're <laughs> going to be having so much fun. The autographs, the posed photos. The VIP only Legends question and answer session. All the superstars are going to be coming to the studio for a little bit to discuss the Paul Bearer Holiday Headlocks toy drive, plus that in ring action that's going to blow the roof off of Memorial <laughs> Hall. And I say one thing we need to, you, we may need you to use a little sweet talk on Piggott. On, on who? Piggott. 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 Who's that? <laughs> the woman that runs the hall. Oh, is, is she pretty? Is it a guy? Well, no. Like I told you, the uh, if you remember the show, The Facts yeah, of Life, told. she looks a little like Mrs. Garrett. Uh, the big titty. Uh, the big titty. The this. woman that ran the school. Big tits. Um, I really don't remember Mrs. Garrett. Because she had uh, like a little waist and big. Brother, the big tits. No, I don't she think have the Facts tits. of Life was way before his time. That is so easy. That's old. way, way <laughs> before his time. But she looks a little like Mrs. G. Maybe she could use a smile. Maybe she needs to rock. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Co cover your balls. We got All right. All right. Let's get down to business. Nice. The same TV taping where we had the uh, Chuck Austin incident. We also saw oh, the this same. I thought this was next week. This is a new episode. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but at that same TV taping, we saw the de uh, official televised debut of two very good friends of yours, two very good friends of Sacco, uh, Brian Nobbs and Jerry Sags, the Nasty Boys, managed by Jimmy Hutt. Were why you happy? You, why didn't you like them when they came through here? Me? Yeah. Well, I know I Matt Daddy. Them. They got on to Matt Daddy. I didn't dislike them. I just... Mm. You know, sometimes some, some appearances go smoother than others. You know what? But I would, I'd have them both back. Yeah, because they're pretty, well, we can't with Nobbs right now. Well, well, Nobbs right now, you know, we hope by the time this episode ends, he's out of the hospital okay, and I, doing better. Yeah, wait, wait. Oh, God. Is he yeah, having, I'm sorry. He'll let uh, you know if you you're having me? a microphone problem, Marty. He'll let you know. <laughs> he'll let you know. Don't worry. Okay. Um, yeah, but we, you, good? Okay. Yeah, he'll let you know. That's why he's in there. Um, they want my phone. No, they don't want your phone. Uh, you, were you happy to have your old buddies from Memphis, the Nasty Boys, in WWF? One time, one time we was um, it was uh, we were living all together, the Nasty Boys, and this is right about the year you're t uh, eighty-seven. It was actually eighty-seven. We're going backwards. Going backwards. All right, but real quick, we. Uh, Hello, Moto. 
Oh, I you keep answer, going. It's probably no, 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 no. It's keep probably going. It's not her. Keep going. All right. Um, we were all living in the same apartment. It was four of us. It was Sags, Niles, me, Sean, in a one-bedroom apartment. And so we would all take turns, you know, like rotating. You know, you got a bed, or you got the couch, or you got the floor. <laughs> And and but the thing was when when they it was Memphis territory, mm -hmm. and when when guys would come in, I forgot who called oh, Kurt Henning called it the way the way uh, the House of Wayward Wrestlers because <laughs> uh -huh. everybody would come over. But one time, and I keep going. That, no, that's Neil. Just I don't care who it is that okay. we're doing a show. Oh yeah. Um, but one time, this Japanese brother, I can't remember his name, Itchy or something. Itchy? Uh, I'm not sure it was Itchy, but, um, <laughs> but it's close. Uh, it was, it was close, close to Itchy. <laughs> Still. Scratchy? <I> mean. <laughs> but he was, but he got, we, we, we partied a lot. Yeah. Then. We did a lot, a lot of medicine. A lot of cocaine. A lot of medicine. This is when I told you about Dewey. Or yo, I told you the rock. Huh? When a young fourteen-year-old rock lived above you, yep. No, no, you, no, you didn't live above us. You lived down there. Oh well, close by. Uh, yeah. Close by. But you know what, Rocky is daddy. That was my, that was my brother, man. I love Rocky. What the fuck? How do you shut the fucking thing off? I don't Keep know. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going, baby. But he's got my phone. Uh, Rocky, Rocky would come over and do a lot of cocaine. You know, we was. What was that? There we go. Mute. No, I, something just rang. No, I yeah, bet. it was the phone. <laughs> keep going, Marty, keep going. Um, so Rocky would come over, and we did a lot of cocaine back then. And, yeah. and, and we didn't even have that much money. But you had enough for cocaine. Yeah, we, we have a pile like this. Maybe not like that. Remember Scarface? Yeah, we had that. And we'd all take a straw and go, <laughs> yeah. and, and Rocky... And I'm so sorry, Dewey. I hope you ain't mad about this. Um, well, because, you know, it's true. You came over and got a beer when you was 14. But, but it, uh, Rocky would, um, he would have to, uh, Dewey's daddy, uh, uh, Dwayne, I'm sorry. Dwayne Johnson. Um, we call him Dewey. <laughs> Explain that. Explain what? Dewey. That was his nickname. Dwayne. Dwayne no, The Rock Johnson. Name. You hey. knew him as a 14-year-old that lived in your neighborhood, and he would come over while Rocky got his cocaine and his rats while his, stop, wife let, worked, let me, let me while his wife me. worked a full-time job to support them. Uh, Otto wasn't working a full-time job at that point? Otto? Atta, his wife. Oh, well, yeah, my not that one. All I don't right, know. Well, <laughs> well anyway. Okay, but here's the thing, though. Uh, 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 Rocky, who me and him were like, did I just mess, did I mess no, it up? He'll let you know, Marty. He'll Do let I, you know. Don't worry, brother. He'll let good? you know. He'll let you know. Okay. Um, yeah, well, he would come over and, you know, a pile of cocaine. And now, we, did Dewey ever do any of it? Uh-uh. No, not at 14. More, no, no. Not for, yeah, not in front of me. Um, but Daddy. Yeah, plenty. <laughs> plenty of medicine for Rocky. Yeah, he, right. but he'd come over and drink with us all day. All right. There, there was well, four of us in a one-bedroom place. We're going to get to Memphis at some point in this journey. Well, wait, but let let's, me, let, me, right, let, me, let, let me tell you this. Tie though. it in. And I shouldn't be telling this. But um, we, 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 we partied. Well, we, we snorted so much cocaine back then. Don't do it no more. Not that much. And and then um, drank now, oh, man. We drank, and Rocky, his dad, he was the actual first rock. He was the first rock. His daddy would, would you know come over. Rocky and I were good friends, but he'd come over. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? At five o'clock, four thirty, he would he would run home. We, we was in the same apartment complex, and he would. Well, we saw him forward rolling one time because he thought he saw the wife, you know, coming home. Yeah. You were talking about yeah. Otto? Otto. Otto. A-T-A. Okay. And, and, and um, 
He was fucking, excuse my language, he was hiding behind the bushes because there was a lot of bushes up against the wall. Yeah. And he's back there forward rolling, ducking his shit because he thought he saw her coming. <laughs> and then, and then uh, Dewey came over, 14, at the time 14. Then he come over, can I have a beer? <laughs> anyway, all right. No, you've told that story before, so I'm glad. No, we I've never told Yes, that. you have, recently. Let me, let me wipe your glasses. No. So we wasted a little time on that, but were you okay, happy to I, have the Nasty Boys in the WWF with you? Do what? Were you happy to have the Nasty Boys yeah, in the WWF boys, with yeah. you? Yeah. Did you think did, maybe perhaps you could have a little uh, run with them? Did, I, I'm wondering, did we? No. We didn't? No. You sure? Yeah, well, I mean, you worked at times, but not a big, it was never a feud. One time, WrestleMania 7. Yeah, yeah it, I know it was. Well, we're going to get to 1991 very soon, so why don't you year, hold off on what that? What year one. we at? We're at the end of 1990. And so, what they did when they came in, and it was actually WrestleMania 7, um, but they came in, we all partied and shit. We'd, uh, they went on the bus. We, I, I love you, Willie. I don't, I'm not telling you. Uh, let's save he, it, save he it for even. WrestleMania 7 in 1991, Marty. We're talking about your, your okay, thoughts I, when I, they I, first I, came I, in. You were but, happy they were there? They, they did smoked, you have a medicine binge that the, night? Huh? Did you have a medicine binge that night with them when? their first night in? Who's? With There's, you and the nasties, yeah. Mm -mm. No. Did you have no, any kind of a celebration with them? Did you go out for a drink? I know I, mess, I, I fuck up a lot, but no, my, I took my masters serious. Uh, after the show, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> there was Madison after the show. Uh, what do I you mean, do you remember, did you, were you guys all living in Tampa at that point? 1990? Uh, I was in Orlando. They were. They yeah, were. Yeah, okay. they were. So yeah. it was like a homecoming for them. Yeah. <laughs> so was there a little Madison that night? The guy on the bus was Willie Nelson. Now, see, Marty, yeah, come on, come on. Okay, yeah, we got... Focus right. on, all right. So you were happy about the Nasty Boys. Yeah. As the year ended, in a surprise twist, one of the guys that was axed that they wound up keeping wound up leaving the company anyway. Ooh, the ooh. greatest intercontinental champion of all time. Who was that? The Honky Tonk Man. You know what I told December the honky. 26th. I tried to get him on our show. He wants to, uh, yeah, yeah, to don't leave. Say, don't say, don't, no, 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 no. It's not about that. It's just he wants many appearances. Oh, you, oh, you said, yeah, yeah. Well, and, and that's how you negotiate. You'd have to line up a lot of work for him. But I understand that, and I respect oh, yes. that. Yeah. But as far as Honky Tonk Man leaving in 1990, any memories of that? He, did, he didn't like working with Warrior. Well, that was, this is two years later now we're talking. Yeah, well, he worked with him a lot. And he well, they like were, he was in a tag, they were in Rhythm and Blues at this point. They were doing tag team work. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he didn't like it. He didn't like Rhythm and Blues? He, you know, he would tell, um, no, no, he didn't like Warrior. Yeah, okay. Well, we're talking 1990 now. Uh, okay. All right. Well, here's what he would tell me. Because he got that country, and I know I got a country voice, but he would say, God damn it, Marty, that motherfucker didn't know how, can I? He just, yeah. Go ahead. Yep. Yeah. That motherfucker didn't know how to work, Marty. He hurt us all the time. <laughs> and Rick Rue was the only one to straighten him out. I told you, I yeah. told you all that. Honky wasn't as uh, rough around the edges as mm -hmm. Rick. Mm -hmm. No, but he hated working with him. Yeah. Remember, he had like 48 weeks in there, it was 50 something. He was champ. He had, I, well, he was the longest reigning Intercontinental yeah, Champion yeah. of all time. And then they had probably four or five months of rematches around the circuit. Who did? Warrior and Honky. Through and the he, end of and 88. He hated it. Because, you know, Warrior's dead, so I don't want to talk bad about him. And I love him, man. He, 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 me and him liked each other. Not like that. We liked each he other. He may have liked you like that. But Stop it. You don't know. I'm pretty sure. But, uh, <laughs> but oh my God, he was not a good worker. And what, what would you, will you just explain that to him? Are what, you talking about Warrior? Uh, what a good worker. Safety? Say, uh, safety. Say, uh, thank you, Lou. Okay, keep well, going. What, what were you going to say? Um, tell him what a good worker is. 
To me, a good, well, there's many different ways you can look at it. Is the best work of the guy that puts the most asses in the seat. But as far as the guys in ring, no, who I'm is the easy, in ring, in ring. Who, who's smooth to work with, who's easy to work with, who's going to make matches look good without Ricky physically Morton hurting you? Nice, Great work. Easiest. You know what? The first time we locked up and he, and he did that, I'm like, oh, my God. Because <laughs> all like, you got to do is this. You don't have to do this. You just do this. And Ricky Morton was the first one, Rock and Roll Express, first one that did that to me. He did that. And I'm like, God damn. <laughs> Shit, it could have been this easy the whole time. <laughs> well, I tell you, we're giving Captain Lou a wrestling lesson who doesn't know much about our industry in the control room. All right, wrestling fans, right now we're going to take a brief time out. Saturday night, November the 13th at Memorial Hall in Melrose. Get your tickets now. BostonWrestling.com. Wrestling fans, years have become months that have become weeks, and now we're talking days and even hours as Boston Wrestling MWF celebrates its 20th anniversary, going back to the 90s. Saturday night, November the 13th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. The superstars and legends of yesterday, today, and tomorrow will take part in a live wrestling event, autograph, photo, fan fest, VIP exclusive Q&A, plus the kickoff to our annual Paul Bear Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive. After Jim Jimmy Kimmel embarrassed Melrose for, well, being Melrose, we're also going to have a superstar costume contest where Best Dressed wins an awesome autographed prize. On November the 13th, you'll see and meet two-time WWE World Champion and Hall of Famer Bob Backlund, WWE Hall of Famer Bushwhacker Luke, WWE Hall of Famer Alondra Blaze, a.k.a. Medusa, from WCW, WWE Intercontinental and Tag Team Champion Marty Jannetty, the Doctor of Style Slick, Doink the Clown, Duke the Dumpster Drossy, Portuguese Man of War Aldo Montoya, plus two-time Impact Wrestling World Champion Die Hard Eddie Edwards, JTG of Crime Time, John Cena Sr., Oscar of Men on a Mission, AEW's Jora Joe, and more. VIP packages and tickets are on sale now at bostonwrestling.com. We'll see you live November the 13th. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer Tony Atlas. The road to WrestleMania has begun. Wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves. You got to see what we have in the eBay store. Check it out. On October 28, 2020, Wrestling's Scariest Night was back with WWE NXT Halloween Havoc. This limited edition collector's autograph poster is number 12 of only 100 produced and is signed by all nine superstars featured on the poster, including Johnny Gargano, Damian Priest, Candice LeRae, Io Shirai, Dexter Loomis, Cameron Grimes, Rhea Ripley, Raquel Gonzalez, and your Halloween Havoc host, Shotzi Blackheart. Comes with WWE Authentication Hologram on the back. You'll also receive an on-air thank you from WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas and a bonus mystery autograph photo. Help keep wrestling legends working. Get this awesome collectible now. Wrestling fans, especially here in the Boston area, we want to thank our great friends at Red Rose for their support for all of our charitable endeavors and programming efforts. Red Rose is two years young and extremely thankful for all the support they've had from our neighbors here in Melrose and beyond for an amazing first two years. Red Rose thanks Melrose and all of the first responders who have fought the good fight and have never given up hope during these unprecedented times. We did it together. Follow Red Rose on Facebook for their anniversary special, facebook.com backslash Red Rose Melrose. You'll be glad you did. Open until 2 a.m. Red Rose will give you fresh, piping hot, mouth-watering food that'll put an ear-to-ear -ear smile on even the toughest critic's face. Check out their full menu online at redrosema.com or give them a call 781-620-1889. Wrestling fans, welcome back to Wrestling Insiders as we prepare to go back to the 80s Saturday night at Memorial Hall in Melrose. Again, you can uh, order online at 8x10 if you can't make the event if you're outside of Massachusetts of one of the great superstars or all of the great superstars that are going to be there. But on this program right now, we're going to go back to 1991. Who do you think was the best superstar ever? Ever. Austin. Yeah. Well, because of the volume of merchandise rock. he stole. Uh, rock out did it. Never did rock. Well, never did Austin business. Yeah, he did. No, he didn't. Well, I was how there. How do you know that? I was there for that. Sue Agency. No. 
Eddie. Cohen. Oh, Cohen. Yeah. Okay. The um, the the, the no, big. I, th I think Rock got the, it. No, no, no. Why, big why? three are Austin, Rock, Hogan. Then at some form after the next three. So are some, Steve really did that good. Yeah. I know he's, he did he's good. The greatest. He did five million one year, but Rock. No, came up. his biggest year, eight figures. Oh yeah, yeah. But but um, Rock came up. It was it was so funny. Oh shit, are we on TV. Yeah. Um, don't look at my boss, and I should put my pants back on. But um, we 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 Rock. Uh, I thought he outdid him. No. He and, and not to say that second best of all time is a bad it thing. Was him. But but it wasn't he wasn't best. Austin. Okay, let me ask all y'all this, including you. Who's the better actress? Uh, actor? Well, I think most people would, would go with The Rock on that. But, you know, I thought Austin had, uh, the. I know we, I think I've told you before, in 2007, we worked with WWE and Lionsgate to do the premiere did, of the movie The Condemned. Fuck, did you ever fuck Sue? Oh, well, you, I'm, well, no, I'm asking you because you're No, when I'm close. insulted, you said that. Well, no, because y'all uh, seem to be close. Yes, she's uh, one of Here. the nicest, kindest. Marty, oh, please. Okay. One of the but, nicest, uh, yeah. kindest human beings I've yeah, ever met. Sure. My nickname for her, to show you how I think of her, yeah. I call her Mrs. Claus. Because that's what she reminds me of. If they were ever to make a, a Santa Claus she type a movie, man. her and, and Kurt Henning's mother, the two of them, I think would make you the perfect Mrs. Henning's Claus. Mother? What's that? You don't know Kurt Henning's mother? I absolutely, I know her very well. How? We did Larry's last appearance and she came with him. So oh, we spent boy, a lot oh, of time oh, yeah. with them. Can't put my pants on. Oh, Marty, stop! Come on. No, I'm serious. Marty, what are you doing? Oh. But anyway, um, how did you know her? Because she had to, Larry was starting to slip a little, so she had to come with what him. Do you mean, what do you mean by that? You know, upstairs. Oh. And I mean, just you're starting to. One of ahead. the nicest human beings I've ever met, Irene her? Henning. Yeah. What just a nice, nice, nice. I wish the services were closer because I would have liked to have gone. She was just one of the nicest people I've ever met. Really? I can't say it. We at the end we took a big group photo, yeah. and I said, no, 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 you got to get in here too. So it was me, Larry, Irene, Bob Orton, and Who's Bob Hall. Irene? What a group! Who's Irene? Irene Henning. Oh, the mother. We got her in the group picture, which was kind of a funny picture. I, uh, and you can, you should see, the, for whatever reason, the look on my did? face Where's is my so phone? miserable. Where's my phone? Well hidden, so it doesn't ring. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, because it kept ringing. It was not a uh, Nia. Um, you know what Kurt did for uh, Larry, for his daddy? He would he would pay for him to come on the road. Oh, and, yeah, that I'm familiar with. Yeah, that, yeah, that meant a lot to him, she told me. Yeah. Do I? That Irene had told me that meant a lot to yeah, Larry. Like yeah. that Wembley show at SummerSlam 92. Yeah. I knew he flew him over for that. And some of the off. WrestleManias. Yeah. And please, Marty, if there is anything you're doing, stop it immediately because we're going to run into trouble that okay. I don't want to have. Okay, but he was one of the only boys that took his daddy on the road. Yeah, and that, what, what does that say about him? What a nice guy Great to do guy. that. That he, his dad, you know, he was done. He, you, you know, well, you no, think you maybe. Guys say it like that. Well, no, I'm, I mean, in his in the in the man's sixties, yeah, he, oh, he, was, he yes. wasn't going to be wrestling anymore. He was done. Do you know what hurt my feelings the most? What? And they called me because Kurt and I were real good friends. Oh, when you found oh, see, okay. And they called me, and they, here's what they told me. I can only I wasn't there. I didn't get to see it. But they said he died in the chair, cocaine in one hand, and. So, uh, pills in the other, and it was in Fort Florida. Somewhere. Somewhere, yeah. yeah, yeah. That that. Oh my God! When I got that call, I remember his reaction. Who's Percy? Because they were very close. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Percy was a good brother. Yeah. I, remember I think. I think Jerry Sags you. told a very interesting story about said. how he found out. Uh, I think they were all booked to, Kurt included, was they were all booked to wrestle at like a, down there at a um, fair or a carnival or something down in Florida. Yeah. And he decided to bring his family with him. It was a new them. thing, uh, XWF or something. No, it wasn't that. They, it was, um, but uh, anyway, for the early part of the day, Sags wanted to bring his family to enjoy, you know, what was going on. And then the night he was going to do the wrestling show. Yeah. And when he pulled up, you know, to start the day, he ran into someone that told him that what had happened. 
you know. Yeah, I so got that the obviously call, ruined man. the day. Back then, because it was you, February you, of '03. Damn. <laughs> um, back then, remember we lost like seventy, and it was and, just it was nonstop a, yeah. every other month. Every other damn month. Did he have, I, I know you said he was a, a pretty good family man, Who? but was he a Who? medicine man? Who? Kurt? He did a lot of yeah, cocaine. A lot of cocaine. It's a shame. I would have liked to have. It's not a shame. Why is it a shame? That he passed away so young. Oh, yeah, that. You know, needlessly. And you know, Rick Rude died too. Yeah. They were, he was they still were in his like 30s. Best he was still in his 30s when Rude passed. Kurt no, was in his early 40s. Okay. One of them was 44. Kurt was 44. I think Rude oh, okay. was only 39. Yeah, they, um, and they were boys. It was yeah. in Robbinsdale. Uh, yeah. The fuck? No, oh, it's shit. just from all, you, all right. Uh, like I said, Marty, he'll tell you. Um, <laughs> but he sounds like someone I think we would have had a lot of fun with. Who? Mr. Perfect. Shit. He would. You won't get better. <laughs> you will not get yeah. better. A it's lot just, of people say Big Boss Man, but I was around them both. Mm -mm, Kurt King was the best. Owen Hart was fun because he he would rib y'all right now. I don't know how, but you know sometimes what he would do? We'd be in the hotel room, and he would call people. Like he'd go yeah, through he'd the phone call book. Them, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and he'd call like the Jerky Boys or way yeah. back. <laughs> he would call people. He goes, all right, the pizza's on the way. And they were like, I didn't order no pizza. He goes, are you not, or so you're not going to pay me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm look, I'm just doing this for a living, and you had twisty bread. <laughs> They'd be like, I, I didn't order that shit. So you're you're really gonna rip me off? I mean, I'm trying to I'm trying to support my family. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back to uh, yeah, where we at? Where we were. Memories of the honky tonk man. I mean, you worked with him from the I day you honky. walked in that company until love, the day I, he quit. I, two and a half years. <laughs> Your memories of your two and a half years with Honky, or maybe even some no, I've interesting been, uh, no, experiences No, we've been since. no, we've been together a lot longer than two well, years. Well, your WWF. <laughs> we was in Nova Scotia one time. Yeah, the Diary Taylor story. Yes. Oh, about yeah, the, about the how promoter. underpaid you were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How gay? Underpaid. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so now I don't know what to say. That's the only memory you have of Honky Tonk. No, now. no. Uh, he hated working with Warrior. Yeah. You mentioned that. Was he a medicine man? No, he loved his liquor. He was a drinker. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I don't, he might have did. I don't know if he a did little, or not. Maybe a little medicine. He, he might. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to say what I don't know. But, um, yeah, he, he, he parted, though. He'd go out with you and have a few drinks. Yeah. He was one uh, of the he boys. He loved Bell's. It was called Bell's Whiskey. He would drink that shit. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to be talking to y'all. He would drink the shit out of Bell's whiskey. And then, and then, every time he got drunk, I got pictures that I can show you. Where's All my right. phone? Well, you can show us off the air. And um, he, would get, he would get mad at Warrior. Every time he got drunk, he'd get mad at Warrior. Really? Yeah. Even after the fact? Yes. Really? Yes. Because, <laughs> I mean, you know, he, he did pretty good. He had a great run. I mean, he's I don't know better. how he, he was supposed to do the job so many times and drop that title. For who? Uh, Randy was one of them, and then he balked at it and kind of refused to. He should have. Um, <laughs> I mean, I love my honky man, but Randy, come on, brother. Well, I guess he honky has told stories before. They had a meeting with uh, all of them, and Vince talked about how they were going to put a rocket on Macho Man's back and fly him to the moon and push him. <laughs> and Honky was like, well, what about me? And they just, you know. <laughs> so he refused to do the It was the night of that infamous Hogan and Andre match that did 33 million people on NBC. Honky refused to do the job. WrestleMania 3. No, that was Savage and Steamboat. That was a badass match. Yeah. Man, that's Savage and Honky. I'll tell you this, though. You want to talk about heat. When I go back and I think back to the events I used to go to at the Boston Garden as a kid, Honky Tonk and Savage, well, there was effing heat in that building for those two. Those fans wanted to see Savage kick the shit out of Honky <laughs> for throwing Elizabeth on Saturday night's main event and then hitting Randy Savage with the guitar. They did a couple of singles and then they did a six you man. You sure that wasn't Jake? Yes. And then they did a six-man cage match with Strike Force and Randy 
against Hot Foundation and Honk. Do, and do I mean, you, do you know? And I love Tom Sink. You know what happened, right? They, they shouldn't have left the door ajar. Uh, <laughs> what, 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 now, but what happened? If I can use this for a thing. Yeah. When you close the hotel door, the little you know, don't disturb thing. Yeah. Sometimes catches the the doorknob, and it was Greg Valentine. It was um, um, Morocco. Yeah. And it was one other. I can't remember. But they, you know, we all party. We all party. You know, we go get each other. And and they went to the room, pushed the door. It was open because, you know, like I said. And I, I'm not sure if it was Tom or Rick. I love y'all. Tom or, 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 or um, Rick jumped out of bed. They had a, you know, two beds in the room. Jumped out and got in the bed. <laughs> they got caught. And Tom quit. Tom would have been good. He would. He left a very good spot. Uh, uh, it wasn't Strike Force. Yeah. Well, no, they were the Can Am connection. Can Am, yeah. yeah. But I mean, Can Am would have had the Strike Force push. Tito was basically lifeless at that point. <laughs> Tito. I mean, Tito got a second life out of Strike Force. You know what? I love Tito. That's my brother. Yeah. But I don't understand. How's he getting twenty? I ain't supposed to tell this. Twenty-five hundred a show. What? Hell. Tito he Santana? He won't even do it. He won't, okay? And, and you know what Rob Van Dam does? I love you, Rob. I know. We've worked with Rob. I know his gimmick. How much you pay him? Um, I, financially, it didn't come out of my wallet, but I know he wanted a hefty sum. It, it was spread out why? over a couple of days. You know but. what he told me? I, I put a price up there they won't take. And then when they say, okay, he's like, Fuck. <laughs> I got to do it now. <laughs> he saved his money that well? He had like three houses. Oh, really? Yeah. Look, Captain Lou is wild, baby, giving us the peace symbol almost. Let any me, any final, let, before we go to break in the end, we, end the year 1990, any final memories of Honky? One time, Honky tried to mess with this girl that I was with, and I didn't care. I didn't care. Shit. Got uh, a girlfriend or a rat? Uh, uh you say rat. More of a rat than, yeah. It was a girl yeah. on, the, on the road. And he, 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 you know, he didn't really mess around with that. Hon really? Honky, no. He honky wanted his whiskey. The Bill's, the Bill's ass whiskey. But once in a while, he wanted a, a little companionship. I watched him tear her up. What? Really? Are we on TV? Tear her up? Now, what do you mean by that? He fucked. I can't say this. Yes, something. you can. You sure? It's potty with mine. He fucked the hell. <laughs> he fucked the hell. I'm sitting there like, man, I didn't even tear her up like that. You just sat that, and that observed was so horrible. this. That was so horrible. You sat and observed? Yeah, well, it's almost like Lou down, down in Virginia. Him. Yeah. Is that right, Lou? No, it wasn't like that. <laughs> well, I have to say, I think he was the greatest intercontinental champion of all time as far as the run he had. Why didn't you like Kerry, Von Eric? He mm. barely had a pulse. Well, you he know, was terrible. You know one there was nothing at, left. You know, one time at St. Louis, I, I think I told y'all, um, St. Louis or Kill Auditorium in St. Louis was just yeah. Famous. When he showed up and he didn't even put his tights on. Yeah, he had under tights, <laughs> and, uh, he, and he came there with a a, 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 a play a playgirl. What do yeah, you call a playgirl. Him? Playboy. You, you no, told Playboy us that girl. one not too long ago when we talked about Carrie. Unfortunate, but honky tonk man, you know, just a great personality. I not love the it. greatest quote unquote in ring worker you ever saw, but he was the perfect heel that you always wanted to see. Whoever he was feuding with, let me kick ask the you hell out of him. Sure. If you ever wrestled, or I mean, if you ever got in the ring, I know you promote. Would you be good? Would you be a good worker? The re Before my injury, I don't think I would have been that bad was because I've heard people that played basketball yeah. usually take to wrestling yeah. and working better. Yeah. And I played basketball for many, many years. You so I think it. maybe... No, you didn't. I did. Yeah. As a white boy? Well, everybody in this area is white other you than Louis. You got some big-ass so. eyebrows. Thank you. All right. Any final memories of Honky or did we hit everything we could hit? Honky called me like three, four, five days ago and he goes, God damn it, MJ. <laughs> that, that, that's all I remember. That's all he said? Yeah, that, no, he said more, but that's the last thing. You should have told him to get his ass up 
I'm to Melrose, Massachusetts, Saturday night, November, I'll call November the 13th. I'll, I'll call him now. All right. Well, we'll get to that. Captain Lou is headed to the back. Phone. We got a, we got a few people we got to call before the okay. day is over about that. But again, fans, <laughs> I know as you look at Marty Gennetti's charming face, meet him live in person Saturday night if you're in Massachusetts, the Northeast. There is no ride too long to meet the legends and superstars we're going to have at Memorial Hall. See this. Who gets to see it? There's people in Australia that watch people this. People around the world. And the great thing about that yeah, is... Yeah, but they can't make it If here. they can't make the event, they can still do mail order. Oh, okay. So go there ahead. you go. So go everybody ahead. wins. So as Captain Lou cuts to the hot camera right now, we are going to take a very brief time out when uh -uh, we come back. Uh -uh. We look at the year that was 1991. Stand by. Hey, Dan. I keep seeing people. Wrestling fans, years have become months that have become weeks, and now we're talking days and even hours as Boston Wrestling MWF celebrates its 20th anniversary, going back to the 90s. Saturday night, November the 13th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. The superstars and legends of yesterday, today, and tomorrow will take part in a live wrestling event, autograph photo, fan fest, VIP exclusive Q&A, plus the kickoff to our annual Paul Bear Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive. After Jim Jimmy Kimmel embarrassed Melrose for, well, being Melrose, we're also going to have a superstar costume contest where Best Dressed wins an awesome autographed prize. On November the 13th, you'll see and meet two-time WWE World Champion and Hall of Famer Bob Backlund, WWE Hall of Famer Bushwhacker Luke, WWE Hall of Famer Alondra Blaze, a.k.a. Medusa, from WCW, WWE Intercontinental and Tag Team Champion Marty Jannetty, the Doctor of Style Slick, Doink the Clown, Duke the Dumpster Drossy, Portuguese Man of War Aldo Montoya, plus two-time Impact Wrestling World Champion Die Hard Eddie Edwards, JTG of Crime Time, John Cena Sr., Oscar of Men on a Mission, AEW's Jora Joe, and more. VIP packages and tickets are on sale now at bostonwrestling.com. We'll see you live November the 13th. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer, Tony Atlas. The road to WrestleMania has begun. Wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves. You gotta see what we have in the eBay store. Check it out. Here's your chance to own a piece of history from the 2020 WWE Draft. On the second night, October the 12th, The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, and Alexa Bliss unleashed hell on Andrade and Zelina Vega. This limited edition 11x14 collector's poster is number 26 of only 50 made, personally signed by both The Fiend and Alexa Bliss, direct from friends at WWE. Comes with Certificate of Authenticity hologram on the poster itself, suitable for framing. You'll also receive a bonus autographed mystery photo and an on-air shout-out as our thanks to you. Get this ultra-rare autographed Fiend and Alexa Bliss poster now. Ah, uh, see ya. Why, hello. I would ask what was on your mind, but I already know. You want to know what has got my beard looking oh so majestic. And I'll tell you, it's sexy as hell, Beard King. Coconut oil, vitamin E oil, almond oil, both sweet and bitter, shea butter, it's all natural. Yes, JTG has actually come out with a high quality product. So support your boy by going to sahbeardcare.com and take one step closer to becoming sexy as hell. <laughs> Cheer. <laughs> Ooh, cheer. <laughs> you know? Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, welcome back. We The adventure continues. We finally finished another year, Marty. Yes. We did a year half of 1988 in WWF. You're we've yet. done all of 1989. <laughs> and we, now we've done all of 1990. You're and it's only taken us a little over a year. <laughs> You're, but why are you yelling? I'm excited about Saturday night. Let me pull your beard. No. Okay. If you know what, if we sell out, you can pull my beard. Oh, we're going to sell out. You think so? Y'all better hurry up and get tickets because it's going to be unreal. Let me tell you what J.J. Walker did one time. All right, let's see. And I, I don't know insanity. if that's Good Times or back, uh, Facts of Life. He was on Good Times. Good Times. Yeah. One time, J uh, uh, Jimmy and I was in Dallas Airport. I'll never forget it because I was a big fan, right? 
what they call it, dynamite. But um, he would, he got right behind me, and, and it was one of them you push your tray and you get what you want, that kind of thing. And he was right behind me. I'm, I'm like, God damn, that's JJ. <laughs> and he was so nervous, he he accidentally knocked his drink over on my damn tray. And I still didn't know that he, he, he goes, I'm so sorry, Mr. Gennetti. <laughs> it's like, oh, you know, you know me. <laughs> he knew of your reputation. <laughs> you like to potty. <laughs> it was so funny. Oh, my God, he was shaking. He was so nervous. Really? Yeah. yeah. What do you think? You were going to take a shot at him or no, something? No, I, I mean, some people get nervous when you're around people. All right. Well, let's take a look at 1991. The Ultimate Warrior, certainly was not setting the world on fire as the <laughs> WWF world champion as the houses were down. Uh, Mr. Perfect you know was why? the intercontinental... Why is that? They, they cut down from ABC shows to AB. And it still didn't help. <laughs> uh, Mr. Perfect was having a lifeless feud with a lifeless, a lifeless Texas tornado, Kerry Von Erich, who didn't have a lot left in the gas tank at that yes, point. Yes, he did. Stop. He was terrible in Stop. WWF. I'd still like That's to know one, one you, good, you know what happened It has Japan. nothing to do with him personally. It has to do with his body of work. It wasn't very well, he good. He was in Japan. Come You've right. told the story about that in Japan about, too many uh, times. You, yeah, you know. yeah, we've okay. heard it. Uh, yeah, but they, they might not have heard it right now. If they, they can catch up on it in the archives. Got to watch all the shows. There you go. Well, head on over to patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Join the Boston Wrestling family. Help Keep wrestling legends working and coming in and out of this studio. Get early ad free access to Wrestling Insiders, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library that's been seen by millions online. Millions more on the Howard Stern Show, thanks to Sheiky Baby. <laughs> Patreon exclusive videos and so much more. Again, patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. If you're enjoying the show during the premiere, don't forget that the uh, premier but the super chat button is open for business thanks to our friend captain lou you can also use venmo at boston wrestling and uh, the old paypal bw at boston wrestling.com we're rocking we're rolling as we head into our third decade after we celebrate <laughs> 20 years on saturday night cover your balls marty pull, stop pull with that stop with that come <laughs> on right. and uh, for the tag team scene the hot foundation unfortunately for you guys were still the tag team champions, and they were kind of in a lifeless... Why was that unfortunate? Well, you would have been making a little more scratch with the belts, no, were you not? They didn't pay you like that back then. Now you do a negotiation, you yeah. should know that. Um, you know, you, you, you agree to them out. Yeah. Back then, it was like being a percentage. You on the card. Yeah, but if you were higher on the card, you would have been right, higher on the right, card with right. the belts. And so tag it would have been teams more scratch. were always middle. Yeah. yeah. Well, you were a little extra scratch, Your feet I think. Stink. Thank you. Uh, and the Hots were in kind of in a boring feud with the power and glory. So it was not the greatest scene at that time in early 1991. Okay, what are you asking? Well, it was just was, money-wise, it had to have been kind of a down period for you. If you had paid think, a percentage. I, they, I don't know this, but I think that y'all, if you mid-card, you're getting the same damn pay. It doesn't make a difference. No. So for the bottom and the top guys, it made a difference. No, or, or no. Just yeah. the top guys. Do you remember, I hate, I hate to tell you all this, remember Brad Rangas? Yeah. He he was always open in match. And, I know and, where this one's going. You already know? Yeah. Because <laughs> they do the national anthem. We always call it, we always said, there's your ring music, brother. <laughs> Well, scandal broke out on New Year's Day in the World Wrestling Federation. Scandal. As a tour was scandal. As a tour what happened? was wrapping up, Bobby the Brain Heenan. Did you know Mel, the black dude that was Phillips, referee? Phillips, yes. He sucked toes. I know. Kurt Hennig, how do you know? Um, Kurt Hennig, he said, what's Mel's favorite food? And he go, free toes. <laughs> On New Year's Day, Bobby the Brain Heenan was flying home to Tampa. Uh, maybe a little too much medicine for the brain. He passed out on the flight. They couldn't revive him, and they had to take him to the hospital. Um, once they let him out of the hospital, he had to go back to the airport to get his bag. Uh, they had gone through his bag and found 48 grams of weed, and Bobby went off to jail on New yeah. Year's Day. Well, let me tell you, Not Bob. as big of a scandal in 2021 as it would have been in 1991, but 48 grams of weed, you know, was it a bad look That's on WWF? I, I don't think he had that much. It, it, in the 
That's what they said. The legal papers, that's what it said, yeah. Okay, well, let me tell you what Bobby did one time. That's we it. used to bet, pull that hair right here. No, right here, right here. Just do that. Um, we, we, we all, you know, you get bored on the road 300 days a Absolutely. year. Absolutely. Yeah, and and so, um, you know, we, we, and, we, and then what we used to do is bet, like, whose bag comes up first. If we don't throw in, you know, like 20 or whatever. It was just, you know, just playing. And so we would throw in $20, and, and whoever's bag came out first, you won the pot. One time we were sitting there waiting, we already threw our money in. It, it's like a little escalator or elevator thing. And here comes Bob, he had went downstairs, he was sitting like this, and he came up. <laughs> We died laughing, man. <laughs> Bobby came down the V. No, he came up. It was going upwards. Okay. <laughs> His legs crossed. He came up like that. And all of us are waiting to get the first bag, yeah. right? And there, here, here comes Bobby Eaton. <laughs> Do you think it was a black eye on a, a family-friendly company to see to Bobby arrested for the, the weed? For the to for a little probably gimmick? Tony Atlas. No, Bobby Heenan. Uh, what, uh, what was the question? Was it a black eye on the company to have him, you know, where it was so family friendly to have him arrested for marijuana? I see, I don't know about that. I don't, I don't think that's true. It is true. How do you know? Because it was reported in the new newspapers. There were legal proceedings that went on. Do you know Hacksaw and she? Very got, familiar with that, but we're talking about Bobby Heenan right yeah, now. But I don't, I don't, I don't think that's true. Do you think it's you true? Don't, I know it's true, but you don't remember it, I guess, is the best mm, way to put no, it. I Do you know. think it was a black eye on the company, again, is the question. Do you uh, think it oh, looked I bad? Oh, I thought you said black guy. You said no, black, black eye. No, black eye. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought you was getting I. racist on me. No, I, I. Um, it should have been. Yeah. Do you think Bobby would have, whether you know about it or not, do you think he was disciplined? What's you going to do to Bobby? <laughs> well, if you're arrested with marijuana in 1991, again, you're making the company look bad. Because okay. the newspaper headline, I'm sure, was not Bobby Heenan was arrested. I'm sure it was WWF superstar Bobby Heenan arrested. Probably. Yeah. But when when um, uh, uh, Duggan and, and she got arrested yeah. on the side of the road, it was on USA Today. Yeah. Remember that paper? Yeah, that was, it was big. On, and, and it's like... Wrestlers wrestle each other, but got caught with coke. Um, I don't even know if it was cocaine, was it? She had coke. I could only yeah. had weed. Yeah, and 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 Vince, Vince, we had a meeting, and he goes, unfortunately, Duggan will never be here again. Shit! <laughs> like a month or two later, he was right back. Duggan and was back Al by Snow. the end of '87. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and you know what Al Snow said? The most perfect thing. Vince will always bring you back if he thinks he can make money with you. True? A hundred percent. One hundred percent. Were you injured early on in 1991? You didn't have your first match of the year until January 18th, working Barry Dasso as a singles the night before the Royal Rumble. Oh, you mean once you split Rumble. up? Okay. No, 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 no. Not when you split up. You were still tagging with Sean, but you didn't have your first match of the year until... The 18th, were you injured? Did it have anything to do with the mm -hmm. Chuck no, Austin no. incident? Did they take get, you no, off the road? I didn't, I didn't get hurt. Well, my ankles broke and my shoulders. You know, um, or this JBL. This is early 91 you're talking about? 96. JBL, you know you who told, that is? We're familiar with that, but I'm circling no, back to not. 91. I'm but, very uh, familiar No, with I was it. never hurt. I did. Man, so why? Was, what were you doing the first three weeks of 91 then? Why weren't you on the road? Can you recall? I'm pretty sure I was. You, no, you weren't. How you know? The history books. <laughs> They're not, you read it on the internet? The history books. I, I missed no damn show. I'm not saying that it you was, missed bookings. Was, I'm saying you late. weren't on them. Okay. When we started back, me and Sean, in 88, yeah. and we did 350 fucking, excuse my language, y'all, 350 shows a year. Sure. Because sometimes you do double shots and, 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 and didn't miss one. Didn't miss a one. I'm not saying so you know missed a book. I'm about. saying, did they have to give you some time off because of the Chuck Austin incident? Uh, but you didn't work. That didn't happen to 90. No, it happened about a month before the time period we're talking about right now. Well, here, I don't know what you want me to, you know, me to tell you, but never missed a show. I'm not saying you missed a show. What are you I'm saying? I'm just saying you weren't working. 
Shit. <laughs> until the 18th of 91. Nah. So from the 1st to the 17th, what the heck were you doing? 92 is the only time in... in we'll, go, we'll get to 92, but I'm saying for 91. I never missed. So I don't Wait, know what, what were you doing? Talking. Were you partying? Wrestling, uh, everywhere. You weren't on the well, shows. Who told you this shit? The, 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 all the books, the historical books that keep records of... the. Did he give us a time, yes. Q? Yeah. You got to do better than that, Lodi, to, no, so I know. I'm did you give you us a right Q? Now. I don't know what the hell you... I better be quiet. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. All I, I know never is missed I'm not show. saying you missed a show. I'm saying maybe they didn't book you because of what had happened with Chad Austin. Did they give you that a little time 90, off? Yeah, that was, was December that? of 90. I'm talking January. 91. No, it was 91. No, it was 90. Oh, fuck. Well, somebody like Google it. The Chuck Austin. What was my phone? The Chuck Austin accident was December of 90. Because Tony One. was there as Saba Simba. One. No, the he I, wasn't there the in 91. The reason I know is because You're 100% was... wrong, Marty. Okay, watch. Uh, the reason I, uh, I know, because I, I, I got, he got hurt, and we had to take time off because of the barbershop window, remember? And so, you know, no, we no, got no, no. to make it look like that it was... That was way, that was over a year later, Marty. I wasn't, man. You it let, was. Are you going to let me finish? I'll let you finish, but you, you, it's inaccurate. Uh, see, I watch. Google um, this. Wait, we Google you, it. Yeah. And because I know when the fuck it was. <laughs> but uh, Angela, the girl, the girl I was seeing, she was a, she was a dancer. Yeah. And from the, how you know? No, I. Just oh, yeah, you just green. Yeah. Okay. Dollhouse, and it was in Tampa. I did not know she had a whole lot of cocaine in her pocketbook, and we went in there, and she was only 20 at the time. Yeah. So the guys working the door, um, they, they they knew, and they knew me though. They were like, Marty, don't let nothing happen, because they get in trouble, you know. And um, Frankie, Frankie, one of them wrestled. Frankie, ah, fuck, I can't remember. But um, remember Texas Hangman? Yeah. Yeah. They. they I mean, you do know shit. Um, but, they, but they're like, don't let her do nothing. And the dollhouse was right Here's the club. Right here is the damn dollhouse. And so they knew her. They knew yeah. her. And she was 20 years old. She wasn't old enough to get in. But they said, we're going to you know, let her in with me. And she, I, she, one of my girlfriends, um, her name, I, I'm not going to say call me, but um, came and hugged me. And, she, and her name was Angela. Angela got mad and like, you know, started, you know, started a fight. Boom! Everybody's on her. They're taking her out, outside the front of the club. It, this, this y'all can look this up. It's fucking. Oh, excuse my language. It's fucking. Can I say that? Yes. It's fucking recorded. It's Google it. And 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 that we went outside the club. She's grabbing me. I'm talking about Angela, mm -hmm. the, the, the one. She's pulling me and, and, and saying, don't leave me, don't leave me. And I wasn't going to leave her. I wasn't going to leave her. But she was pulling me. And what had happened was we got out front, but that cop was that. He fucked up. Hopper was his name. He picked her. He, he asked for her ID. And she couldn't because she was shooting, you know. Uh, and she kept turning. I didn't know she had all that cocaine in the pocket, you know, in the pocket, or her purse, or in her purse. And so she kept turning from him, and he finally got mad and picked her up and slammed her to the, to the ground. It was safety. Yeah. Okay. Well, what does that mean? Uh, how, how Just much? keep going. Keep going. Um, Quickly. Slam. Okay. Slammed her to the ground. I'm standing right there, and the girl I'm with just got slammed to the ground. But but what what made me grab him? He he grabbed her by the head. He bounced her off the off the ground, and he was going to do it again and again. I underhooked him. I did not hit him. I did not hit him. And it's in the police report. I never hit him. I did not hit him. I wanted to, but I did not hit. Him. Is that why maybe you missed a little time in early 91? That's why. And it was 92. But that was long, that, that was a year before the Bobby Nin shot 92. incident. 92. Right, so I guess fans, I guess the best way to sum it up, it is a mystery as to why Monty Gennetti wasn't a mystery. on those early 1991 I WWF live events. <laughs> yeah. I bet you a dollar.
You were wrong about the Hall of Fame. That, that <laughs> one, you know what it was? It was a Survivor Series. And, I, I know, I told you that. And you told me I was wrong. I know. And like I, this one, I once, you, on one. once no. you Google it, no, you're going to find you out about this one. I don't one know when I went to jail for six months. I'm not saying that didn't happen then, but what I'm saying is. is what are you that saying? It, what I'm saying is. In the 90, any of y'all look it up. Look it up. Look it up. In the 91. I'm not saying that's not and when that I happened. And I couldn't come back to I came out of them, it was Canada. I had to come out. And do the, I uh, had my Guns N' Roses shirt on. And I had to come yeah. get, yeah. And, and and Sean was in the ring, and Sherry was in the ring, and I came out there to get his ass. I remember and he that. And he went to hit Sean with the mirror. Remember that? But I remember, and I'm 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 not and disputing any her, of that. He pulled her, and, and actually, let me tell you, can I tell y'all something? But what I'm saying is, is what we're talking saying? about early, the first few weeks of 1991. Into 91, brother. I understand that, but what I'm saying is, is we're phone? talking I'm about two totally right now. different things. I already know when it was. Because I, I was in jail. All for right, six wrestling months. fans, maybe this is something we can bring up during the Legends Q&A. In 91. In 48 hours this He's Saturday wrong night. He's on this one. He I, got I, me I on am the not last wrong. One. He's wrong. No, you, he got, you got me on the snooker one. You're right as far as the timeline well, about me, when that me, incident happened, phone? but it has nothing to do with what I'm asking you about. What are you asking me? It's like I'm asking I'm asking you tell me the alphabet and you're saying one through ten. Oh, so I'm on a whole, <laughs> whole different page? Yes! <laughs> That's a great way to put it. All right, wrestling fans, celebrating 20 years of Boston wrestling. We're going to oh, kick shit. off the holiday Sorry. headlocks Paul Bear a toy drive. We're going to have the autographs, the post photos. All of you great VIPs are going to get the Legends Q&A. Then we're going to have action that's going to light the ring off fire and blow the roof off of Memorial Hall in Melrose. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com now. Get your tickets now. It helps us an awful lot. At the door, if you pay with cash, you save a few bucks over paying with a credit card because the credit card fees, they just keep going up and up and up. And it's the only way we can do it. This man is probably on a plane headed back to Boston as we speak now. during this no, show. No, Hartford. No, 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 no. This is this is oh, 48 this is hours a, before okay. uh, um, November do you 13th still love event. Paul? Who? Oh, every day. Yeah. We still miss him. Good brother. All right, and we're going to celebrate him too, as we're going to have a tremendous jackpot for our holiday headlocks toy drive. And then not only, we're gonna do one at the live event this Saturday, November the 13th, but then sometime in January, uh, December, I should say, <laughs> we're gonna do a cyber version of it. So fans oh, anywhere in the world can participate and win a jackpot of prizes. Let so me, it's cool, we're doing two of them this year. TV? If you want, if you must. <laughs> um, will you be on? Just please, we're out of time. Oh, oh, go ahead, I'll do it next show. Next All show. right, fans, we'll see. Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. There's only one place to be for memories that'll last a lifetime as we take Wrestling Insiders and we bring it to life in that venue. You're not gonna wanna miss it. You'll nice never place. forget it. Nice we'll place. see you Saturday night. Super nice. I don't know if I can handle him, but I know we can handle <laughs> you. Come on out, we'll see you then. Good night. Wrestling fans, years have become months that have become weeks, and now we're talking days and even hours as Boston Wrestling MWF celebrates its 20th anniversary, going back to the 90s. Saturday night, November the 13th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. The superstars and legends of yesterday, today, and tomorrow will take part in a live wrestling event, autograph photo, fan fest, VIP exclusive Q&A, plus the kickoff to our annual Paul Bear Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive. After Jimmy Kimmel embarrassed Melrose for, well, being Melrose, we're also going to have a superstar costume contest where Best Dressed wins an awesome autographed prize. On November the 13th, you'll see and meet two-time WWE World Champion and Hall of Famer Bob Backlund, WWE Hall of Famer Bushwhacker Luke, WWE Hall of Famer Alondra Blaze, a.k.a. Medusa, 
from WCW. WWE Intercontinental and Tag Team Champion Marty Jannetty, the Doctor of Style Slick, Doink the Clown, Duke the Dumpster Drossy, Portuguese Man of War Aldo Montoya, plus two-time Impact Wrestling World Champion Die Hard Eddie Edwards, JTG of Crime Time, John Cena Sr., Oscar of Men on a Mission, AEW's Jorah Joe, and more. VIP packages and tickets are on sale now at bostonwrestling.com. We'll see you live November the 13th.